Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am finally showing you guys how we completely built out our chicken coop and run and how we made it 100% predator proof. So out here on our new piece of property, we've got pretty much every single predator you can think of. We've got mountain lions and coyotes and raccoons and neighbor dogs and cats and hawks and just everything. We just have everything. You can just say that. So um, we, we made it so that anything and everything could not get inside that coop. And it's actually been almost a year now since we built it out and it has stayed true. It has remained 100% predator proof. So I'm super proud of it. And I really wanted to get this video out for you guys just so, you know, obviously we could share the process of the whole thing with you guys, but you know, possibly give you guys ideas or inspire you guys uh, to build your coop this way. So, so in the beginning of the video, I take you guys through the the process as we're doing the building, but then you'll get, you guys will see the middle and the end of the video. It is actually me just showing you guys what we did and telling you kind of what we did. And the reason why it's like that is because in the beginning of the video, that's originally how I wanted to film the entire thing, but we had a planned vacation that we were going on and so we had to just build everything out really quickly and we didn't have time to film it as we were building it so uh, i still you know I, like i said i still wanted to get this video out for you guys so that is a little reason why the video is kind of broken up like that but you guys get the idea you guys see everything that we did so if you're interested in that just keep tuning in i'll go ahead and start the video right now so today we are um, securing the fencing to the carport and we, we use these zip ties just to help secure it in place for us and then we're taking this really thick double wired metal wire it kind of is like the same wire that is used for here but it's actually even thicker it's barbless barbed wire. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. Barbless. I was going to say barbed wire, but there's no barbs on it. But I guess it's barbless barbed wire. Anywho, so um, yeah, so we're wrapping it around a couple times and then tying it really, really tight. And then um, down here, we're actually wrapping it around a few times around the bottom and then around the leg. That way it's really secure on there. And then we're going to wrap a few down around the bottom here. Um, and then we're going to just do that obviously to every pole. Up here we actually did the same thing and we put it through here so that it's holding the fence up so the fence doesn't sag down. And that's pretty much everything we've done for today. Alrighty guys, so to give you a little update video on what we did, um, we went ahead and secured this whole entire side of the coop run and then we did it every about every four of these holes we secured another tie along the bottom we also have it every couple of feet to secure the the bottom of it that way nothing can crawl underneath and so we did that to the, every single pole along all the bottoms plan on putting a skirting out on the other side so we'll fill any any empty spaces underneath the carport pole with some big gravel rock and then we're going to go ahead and lay out some skirting about two and a half feet to three feet of more of the same wire and we're going to connect the skirting to the wire right here and we're going to be securing all of the wires and stuff to the side of the actual coop and we'll also be putting the skirting around the entire outside of the coop as well so that there's no way anything can get in. So we're trying to uh, secure the top here now with these U-bolts. Um, so basically you just put it where you want, you put the wire in between it and then you're going to screw two holes in each side. And he's also using a uh, special steel um, kind of bit. Can you just shove it through just like that? Apply or screw on the nut. And so it'll look like that afterwards. And then we're gonna come back by with a 
wrench and uh, screw them really, really tight. And we're going to do this about every four. So I did want to mention we got this shed from. It is an old hickory shed. It's a 10 by 12. And uh, we got it from just like a local feed store that's selling them. And we got a pretty good deal on it. The thing that sold us the most was, you know, the metal roof and the fact that it's just so well built inside compared to most sheds that were the same size. They were actually just a little bit cheaper, but the materials were not near as nice and it didn't have a metal roof. So that's the, ultimately the reason why we decided to go with the old hickory shed. Um, and then as far as the carport, this is actually a carport that we bought from a local carport company out of Manteca. And um, it's just a 20 by 21 carport. They had a deal going on it. And I think it was only like 1200 bucks for this huge carport. So that's um, the reason why we decided to do the carport was because it protects them from the sun and then also from aerial predators. And it will, you know, it ultimately helped us enclose the entire thing by having a structure there for us. And then inside we have our new nesting box right here. Got it off of Amazon. This is just a closet rod. And then we have a exhaust fan right here. That's to help keep it cool in here and bring some cool air in from the outside. So we got a last step of the coop done. That was doing the automatic coop door. Now that's not for security, which most people have the coop doors for is security. Obviously the front of our coop is very secure. We don't really need that coop door, but it's actually for ourselves. We keep the birds locked up up until like 6.30 or 7. That way we're not hearing them crow at 4.30 in the morning when they probably want to come out of the coop. Then we laid another layer down on top of the vinyl and then now we're going to put some pine shavings on top. Alrighty guys, so this is the part of the video where I just kind of show you guys and tell you guys what we did. So I'm going to start with inside of the coop and I'm going to start with the front part where the door is. Um, so we got this door right here from Tractor Supply. Both sides of this door have a hollow pole. So we just buried or hammered in some rebar pretty far down so it's real nice and sturdy. And then we just slid the door on top. That's how we, we got it to stay where it's at. And then to secure it, we actually, well, to secure the skirting, which is underneath all of this, we bandaged it all together with that really thick wire that we used and you can see the wire is all along the side that's how we bandaged or how we secured this fence uh, to the actual door so there was no uh, gaps or anything that animals could push through or get in and then up here this is an actual separate piece because unfortunately with it being such an odd shape and it being so tall you can't use one one strip of fencing for all of it. You have to kind of measure it out and then you have to cut it and then you, you basically just have to use a bunch of different pieces and kind of bandage them together. 
So for this side, we used one piece for right here for the end cap and we kind of folded it over and then you can see we tied it really tight in the corner and then all along the entire roof we we uh, wired it all the way over so that it was push or it was pulled really tight and so nothing can climb up and kind of pull the wire back and get in and we specifically did it on the outside and not on the inside because it would be harder for an animal to pull than to push its way in so um, that's basically why we, we did it like that. And then you can see that there's two different pieces here. So we, to bandage this end cap with this middle cap, we just used some wire and we just tied it real tight. And normally what, we would have just bent over the wire and kind of bandaged it like that. But since these ends were kind of short, that's just how we did that piece. And then to bandage this bottom, piece of fencing to the top piece of fencing, we did what I just said, which is just you wrap one piece to the other piece and you just do it for every single little wire that's sticking down from one of the pieces and you just wrap it all the way across and that's just like as secure as it could possibly be. And then you can see the, the fence, the skirting that we have out here, it is secured on the bottom all the way just like this we wrapped it down there along this fencing so it's really tight and then for the bottom where the skirting is on this along the side of the coop we actually have these really really large metal staples and these aren't staples like with the gun they're like large staples that you have to hammer in and we got those from you know our local ace hardware and so we just stapled it literally anywhere the fencing needed to be secured to the coop. We just, we literally just hammered one in almost every single <laughs> wire, all the way across, all the way down. And then on the outside of the coop, like I said, that's how we actually secured this fencing to the coop so nothing on the outside could crawl underneath the skirting and get in via that way and so we did that all the way across and then we did it on the outside as well on the outside and i'll show you guys that in a minute so and then if we take ourselves over here it's basically the same thing we created an end cap right here which is folded over so it fits real nice and tight in that corner. And then we just, if you can see, let me get it to focus, there we go. Um, so you can see we actually just, you know, wrap the wire real tight, pulled it really tight. And we did that all the way across about, I'd say a foot apart maybe. And then just to bandage these together, we just, we just wrap the wire. And it is raining right now, so hopefully, the rain's not too loud and then just to bandage the two side pieces again we just did the wire and then to bandage this top piece to the bottom piece we just wrapped it around like we did on the other side and then the skirting that's that skirting is literally surrounding the entire run in coop and it's secured along the bottom just like it was on the other side, just like it is right here. We just wrap it all, all the fencing together. And it works really, really well. You just have to make sure you, you wrap it really good. You just can't do it kind of half-assed. So to secure the fencing to the T-post, we just used these chain link little doodads and we did it all the way down to the very, very bottom. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then just to secure the, the side pieces in each corner, we just wrap those really thick wires all the way down to the very, very bottom. Probably every fourth hole or something like that. I think I said that in the beginning. And then you guys know we put the U-bolts on so that nothing can get its way in through the sides. So that is basically everything we have done to completely secure it on the inside, make sure nothing can get in. 
it has been amazing it's worked really really well and then we also actually added this hardware cloth on the bottom i'd say three and a half to four feet and that's so no raccoons or possums or any sort of animal that is smaller can reach through and try to grab them by their wings or their heads or whatever and hurt them and so that works really awesome and that's just on the inside on the bottom half all the way around and i actually have it even on the door and everything it's literally on every single exposed piece and this is just a shade cloth i got from amazon this is our misters to keep them cool in the summertime and then we're actually in the process of re-rocking and sanding our entire run so it's not muddy anymore like it is over here that video is going to be a completely separate video and i will be posting that hopefully the next couple of months when we actually get the project all done so keep your eyes open for that and i'm just going to show you guys what we did on the outside everything's kind of a mess right now because we're like i said we're in the process of fixing all of that so like i said earlier we used the metal staples to secure the wire to the side of the coop and the skirting all the way along the side of the coop the skirting is literally surrounding the entire coop and any area where it's a little bit more vulnerable we put these stone pavers and we just did that so that nothing could lift that skirting up and crawl underneath it or dig or whatever it may be now we didn't put the stone pavers on this side or the other side that's over there because there's these very large uh, metal poles that have rebars and this ground's super super duper hard and the skirting goes out about three two and a half to three feet so and then on the corners where we secured each different side to the pole we actually overlapped it quite a bit you can see that here and then we used the thick metal wire to secure both sides and the pole all together and we did that on all four sides and then the skirting you can't really see it now because all the grass is growing up but it overlaps on the corners as well and then we had stone pavers right here as well, but we put this coop here, which is our silky coop, but we're actually going to <clears throat> pick that up, take it out, move it because it's actually blocking water from flowing right there. So we'll be doing that soon. And then the stone pavers will go back there. And the reason why we did the stone pavers right here is because this doesn't have that metal pole, so it's actually a vulnerable area. So we needed to put something there to help secure it, make sure nothing gets underneath. But it's been six, six plus months now since we built this coop. So all this grass and everything has grown up, which has been really awesome. It's kind of helped make it a little bit more secure. Alrighty guys, that is it. That wraps everything up for how we built out our chicken coop and run. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you guys found some good information from it and maybe it'll inspire you or give you guys some ide some ideas uh, just a reminder to keep a lookout for my next video which is going to be all about the inside and how we're renovating the entire bottom and making it all mud free basically and if you guys like this video and you want to see any of my future videos go ahead and like and subscribe and if you have any questions go ahead and leave them down below i will see you guys in the next video take care